This right here is a savory, potatoey, umami-ish gin. I literally just finished making it and I want to show you how I did it. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still at the Channel, all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So, uh, last week I made a potato vodka. You can check the video out over here. I really quite enjoyed that spirit and it turns out that it had a interesting sort of uh, savory potato-y flavor still lingering in it and it made me want to try something a little bit different. It made me want to do weird things to be honest. Haven't gone full weird yet but what I did do is make a savory gin out of it. So let me show you how I did it. To make gin we need a neutral spirit or a vodka and I'm using the potato vodka that I made last week. Like I said check that video out to suss it out. We need one litre of this stuff and it happens to be at 91% ABV. Next up we have the botanicals. You can't make gin without juniper so let's start there. I'm using 24 grams of juniper. I like to use a little jeweler's scale to measure these things out. I'll pop a link in the description down below for you. Next I use a pestle and mortar to give the berries a light crushing. Once they're all crushed, pop them on into the spirit. Next up we have coriander seeds. We're going to give these exactly the same treatment. We're using 5 grams, a light crush, and on into the spirit. This is a potato gin, right? And savory, right? So to my mind there's only one herb that has to come first, and that's rosemary. I'm using four grams of it and I'm taking the leaves off the stem. To help add to that savory herby vibe we're adding another three grams of sage. Once again plucked leaves only. Next up to keep the earthy theme going we have three grams of angelica seed. And to finish things off with an umami punch we're gonna add five grams of shiitake mushrooms. Dried ones. Dried ones. Oh yeah, don't forget the citrus like I almost did. <laughs> Two or three really good sized peels from an orange. Close your jar up and let it sit overnight. It's been a little under 24 hours uh, and our little maceration here has been sitting and coloring and then getting delicious over that time. Uh, the pot's still set up just behind me here, almost ready to go. I gotta say guys, it's smelling pretty good. Uh, it is earthy, it is savory, the herbs aren't taking over. If anything, if anything, uh, the orange is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna whack all of this into the little mini pot still, but I am gonna take uh, the largest piece of orange out. Now, uh, people keep asking me about scorching in this thing. I get away with it. Low heat, uh, relatively large surface area. It just doesn't seem to be a problem for me, which is awesome. I'm not going to go into huge depth uh, in this video on how I run this pot still specifically for gin but I do have another couple of gin videos using this exact same setup. I'll, uh, I'll link some up here for you. Uh, you can go watch those. Let's get stuck in and see what we can get made. eh? So there we have it guys, first drips coming on out, we're going to take just a little bit off now to discard and then get into the run. So people always ask me why I take cuts or four shots off the beginning of a gin run like this because it's already, you know, I, I made vodka already, I already made good cuts, it's already a pretty clean spirit uh, and the answer is I'm not. I'm not taking four shots. It's, it's not a safety thing, it's not even a um, jaggy harsh spirit thing. It is about the flavour that comes through and it's something that uh, I've seen I think originally in Odin's Easy Gin. Link up here for that one guys. To be perfectly honest with you I don't know exactly the mechanics of what's happening here but the flavour, the, the, the botanical flavour that comes off at the beginning is just whack more often than not. This is actually not too bad but it is super super orange heavy so for the next few jars I'm just going to collect 
uh, small amounts and then I've got the ability to blend flavor out or in as I want it later on. This is a flavor decision, not a safety decision. I'm not taking four shots. I'm now up to my fourth jar coming off the still and I have to say guys if you're relatively new to distilling and you haven't completely got your head around how different components come out of the still at different times and how it is not a momentary switch how it bleeds from one thing to the next how all of the changes including you know heads to hearts hearts to tails all of that sort of stuff how it is a gradual sort of gradients between multiple things if you haven't experienced that yet do something like this make a gin and then run it don't stress too much about what you're going to get at the end or collect into jars so you can blend off later on but just constantly taste it as it comes off the still and you're going to see flavors pop up arise slowly fade out while other things fade in and then fade out it it, it, it really is quite fascinating like i said at the beginning all orange and then it went into the umami uh, savoriness of the mushrooms, into the sage, and now we're starting to get into a kind of a spiciness in the middle here. So I don't know when the rosemary's going to show up. I'm expecting that to show up quite near the end, but uh, who knows? So I collected all the way down uh, until we started to get some rosemary. Unfortunately, right after the rosemary showed up, I started to get a really um, like leafy, stalky, uh, green vegetation and bitterness show up. So I let that go for a little while just to see if it clean up again. It didn't. So that's where we've left it. Uh, this is what we have left here in front of me. Down the bottom, it is quite uh, musty and earthy. Uh, but I'm happy to keep that. The only one that I have in front of us that I'm not keeping is this. And that is the, um, those, those first drips that came off that is super, super orangey. I think we're going to leave that for now. So let's get all of this blended in together. In case you're wondering, and I'm sure some of you are, that has turned out to be a little over a litre and 76%, something like that. Uh, so let's get this back in here and I'll take a small sample, proof it down. We can do a little taste and uh, see what this has turned out like. So that should be right around 45%. Let's give it a nudge. Cheers guys. Oh, it's quite delicate really. Earthy and spicy, not a lot of the herb. Mm, okay, definitely get the sage. I touch a hint of the rosemary i can't taste the mushrooms but what i do get is a umami savory unctuousness that goes really well with the creamy sort of texture the oily texture of the potato uh, this is quite nice not entirely what i was hoping for to be honest i would uh, bump the rosemary up a little bit but i think we're really close uh, but all in all it's actually a pretty well-balanced gin. It doesn't present overly gin-like, to be perfectly honest, though. I'll give you a few things that I would think about experimenting with on this base recipe, but before I do, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. You're the reason I get to mess around and play with this stuff at home, uh, and I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate it. So thank you very, very much, guys. All right, what would I change? I would probably dial the Angelica seeds down just a touch. I think I would leave the sage where it is, but put slightly more rosemary and you could probably stand to put in a little bit more mushroom as well. I was worried, I have a thing with mushrooms where um, dried mushrooms sometimes head almost fishy towards that sort of flavor. And I, you guys, I think you guys know by now, I'm a little paranoid when it comes to uh, fish flavors, but it hasn't come through like that at all. The sort of umami 
general savouriness of them I really do think has come through and that works really well with the texture and the slight there's still a slight hint of that potato thing going on so I think that works really well the other thing I was thinking of is um, you could potentially put potato skins like brush a potato really well peel a potato and put some potato skins into the maceration and if you wanted to bump up that um, potato side of things and really make it savory and crazy so uh what am i going to do with this next well i need to proof it down and bottle it and i actually have a plan to uh, do some fat washing with both bacon fat and lamb fat and then play with a cocktail for that so that might be coming up next week guys uh let me know if you're interested in seeing that and and we'll make it happen all right guys if this video helped you out if you enjoyed it if you just found it interesting please guys please give it a thumbs up that would help me out a whole lot uh, if you're not subscribed yet and you want to see more videos about home distilling, random stuff, subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell and you'll see the, uh, you know, these videos pop up in your feed. All right, guys, keep on chasing the craft. Have an awesome week and I'll catch you next time. See ya.